Today we're going to winterize a four-stroke Sea-Doo personal watercraft. Start with taking the seats off. We'll inspect fluids, coolant level, dipstick, check the engine oil. She's full. Our first step in winterization is to stabilize the fuel. The sea carry about 16, 16 gallons of fuel, so we'll put about an ounce and a half of stabilizer in. Reinstall the cap, close the lid. We will now flush the unit with fresh water, hooking up our flushing attachment to the proper location. Very important, do not start the water until you have the engine running. Install the safety lanyard, start the engine, turn on the water, make sure you have a good flow of water coming out of the exhaust and the jet pump. Also at this time, we'll hook up our communication cable. The diagnostic port is right here. Disconnect it, we hook our computer link cable on. Come over to the computer, we'll read the data. Check customer's name, that's correct. Check the hours, it has 19 hours on it. We will at this time reset the service hours. Check the unit for faults. This unit has none at this time. We'll click over to monitoring and check our engines for proper intake temperatures, exhaust temperatures, and this is your engine temperature. Battery voltage. At this time, we'll also perform a cylinder drop test. You'll hear a slight change in the engine when I push the button. Cylinder one, cylinder two, and cylinder three. During our winterization, we'll want to get this engine up to about 150 degrees Fahrenheit for good oil uh, removal. So we'll let it run a few more minutes. As you can see, now we're reaching our 150 degree margin here. What we'll do is we'll turn the water off first, disconnect our hose, and since we're hooked up to the computer, I can shut it down by computer. We will write the data into the computer on the jet ski. Now I have to remove the safety lanyard and wait for a message to disappear. Okay, plug it back in one more time just to make sure all the gauges are working properly. Everything seems to be in order. Now we can disconnect our comp computer link, reinstall the port in its holder. Okay, now that we've got the engine up to, up to temperature, we'll remove the seat bridge and we'll proceed with an oil change. Remove the four bolts. top half of the bridge and the bottom air intake. Now we have complete access to the engine. Once again we'll pull our dipstick out and check oil level. Right where it should be. This is a protective cover. Gives us access to the top of the engine. Spark plugs, dipstick, oil filter, oil fill. On all the four strokes we were Remove the oil through the dipstick with a vacuum device. First, we'll undo the bolt securing the oil filter cover. Careful, we'll have some oil on it. And then the cover itself. and the oil filter. Just set it like that so she drains down a little bit. We don't get oil all over the motor. Now we'll suck the oil out of the motor. In a normal oil change, we'll get about three quarts of oil out of the motor. Okay, our oil's almost all gone now. We'll remove the oil filter. There's a small amount of oil in the cartridge here. We'll vacuum that out of there. Now we'll install our new oil filter. That simply drops down into the canister. The lower O-ring on the oil cover. Remove that. Discard. 
and install a new one. So fine coating of oil on the O-ring and she'll go right back where she came from. So make sure you get it in there. You'll feel it drop right in. Reinstall your bolt and tighten. This is a Torx socket. You can get them at any auto parts store or mine to snap on. Wipe up any oil. And now we're ready to add fresh oil to the engine. Remove the oil fill cap, handy funnel. And as I said before, it will be about three quarts. We are using SeaDo XPS 10W40 mineral base oil. It is a BRP product. Always check your owner's manual to make sure you use the proper oil. I'm gonna pour it in slow because it will spit back at you. On the third, I don't put the full quart in. I wanna check my oil level before I top it off. So we'll put about three quarters in and we're right on the full line, but that will drop down after we start it up. Our oil change is basically done. Now what we'll do, we'll hook it off the antifreeze and we'll flush the engine with antifreeze that will go through the exhaust system so that no water is left inside, so we'll be good for winterization. We use non-toxic antifreeze, RV antifreeze. We'll do this in the same fashion as we did when we flushed it with fresh water. We hook our hose up and we'll start the engine. Turn on our antifreeze. And we want to have a nice, good pink flow coming out both the exhaust and the jet pump. We'll normally run between three and four gallons of antifreeze through the engine, depending on the model. And that should do it. Once again, turn the antifreeze off, and then we'll turn the engine off. This time we will rev it up just a little bit, just to expel any extra water or antifreeze out of the exhaust system. Now we'll recheck our oil level again. It should have dropped down just a little bit. And it looks pretty good. Don't forget to reinstall your oil fill cap. It will make a mess if you don't. We'll take our flushing adapter out of the back. Now we're ready to do a compression test. A 5 8 socket, spark plug socket, our adapter, and then our compression gauge with a quick connect fitting. To remove the spark plugs, we first have to remove the coils. They're located here on the top of the engine. Disconnect our leads going to them, making sure not to lose the little rubber bushing inside there. That's a water seal. There's one on each one, so you want to be careful you do not lose them. Next, we'll remove the coils, individual coils for each cylinder. They simply come right up, and the spark plugs are still in the cylinder. Next, we'll remove spark plugs. I first loosen them. And as we pull the spark plugs out, we will inspect them, make sure they look right. There's no foreign debris on them. As you can see, this one looks great. Nice color to it. Number two, it's identical to the first one. And number three. Identical to the first two. Now we'll perform our compression test. Take our adapter, screw it into the spark plug hole. Take our compression tester, connect it. On the CDUs, they have a mode called drowned engine mode. Squeeze the throttle full. That way the engine will not attempt to turn over, will not inject fuel, and will not activate the spark plugs or the wires going to the coils. So now we're safe to perform our compression test. Here we go. This motor has good compression on this hole. It's about 195 pounds, right where it should be. Release our gauge and move on to the next one. Once again, squeeze the throttle, push stop start button, and watch the gauge. And we'll do the third and final cylinder now. 
it's okay to have a small variance, about 10% between the three cylinders, that's acceptable. Now we'll disconnect our lanyard, stop the beeping, and we can reinstall our spark plugs. And I'll put them in hand tight first. And then just a little torque, just to get them tightened down. You don't need to over kill them. There's no reason for that. Now we'll reinstall the coil sticks. A little Bombardier lube on the coil sticks just to keep things lubricated here nice. Pop them right in. Reconnect our wires. And we're almost done with the engine side of it. The best thing to do now is to give the engine some fogging fluid. And to do that, we'll remove the fuel injector rail. There's two bolts that hold the injector rail in. Carefully remove the injector rail. Make sure no debris falls in there and the O-rings are intact on the ends of the injectors here. Now we'll take some engine store. It's a quick, about a count of three to four. One, two, three, four. And we're shooting this right into the hole for the injector, where the injectors would be. One, two, three, four. We'll reinstall our fuel injectors. Put some Loctite on these screws. Reinstall our screws. Snug them down, then we'll torque them. Always check your service manual for the proper torque specs on every screw. On these, it'll be 89 inch pounds. So we'll set our torque wrench. Now, once again, what we'll do, install the safety lanyard, squeeze the throttle, it'll be in drown engine mode, injectors won't fire, the ignition coils will not spark but we'll turn the motor over and pass this fogging fluid through the engine. And that's all you need, about five seconds of that. Passes it through. We now have the proper amount of storage fluid through the engine. The engine's been antifreezed. Our next step will be to disconnect the battery. We'll disconnect the air intake hose to gain access to the battery. You always want to disconnect your negative side first. That would be the black wire. And reinstall the screw in the battery so you don't lose it. Make sure the post is out of the way. And reconnect your air intake hose. Now we'll take our Bombardi lubricant, anti-corrosive lubricant, and we'll pretty much spray everything, all metal components, wire connectors, wires themselves, anything that has a chance of corrosion. And when you open it up in the spring, it'll be nice and shiny. So we'll pay particular attention to the throttle body, and then work the throttle a couple times just to Put our cover back on here. Reinstall our dipstick. And we're ready to put our seat bridge back in. Now we're going to test our antifreeze with an antifreeze hydrometer. We'll make sure it's going to be, the antifreeze is going to protect the lowest temperature in your area. Simply insert the line, and this antifreeze is good to 10 below zero, which is plenty for around here. Reinstall our cap, and that pretty much takes care of our engine end of winterization. Okay, now that we're done with our engine side of it, we're going to go to the jet side for winterization needs. Here at Shorts, we pull the jet pump out and inspect the wear ring, the impeller, 
and the grease that's inside the new four stroke pumps. To do that, we'll start by undoing the hose clamp for the O-Pass system. It's right on the top of the jet pump on the outlet nozzle. And then we use our pick just to help get the hose off of the elbow and prior off. Next, we'll undo our shift cable, which is on the port side. Then below that will be our O-Pass vein for the port side. Bring it over, and we'll do the O-Pass vein for the starboard side. Now we have both O-Pass veins disconnected. We'll disconnect our steering cable. These are all 10 millimeter nuts and bolts. It makes it very easy. And now our steering cable is disconnected. Now we can remove the steering nozzle and reverse bucket as one assembly. and the steering nozzle will come off in our hand. At this time, we're gonna inspect the inside of the steering nozzle. Here's your screen right here for the O-Pass system. It prevents debris and sand going into the O-Pass veins. We'll check that, it looks pretty good. Our bolts look good. Everything looks good inside there. Place that off to the side. Now we can remove the jet pump. Jet pump is also held in with four nuts on four studs. Careful, there are four washers on there also. Pull the jet pump out, and we'll take a look inside. As we can see here, we have some wear on the wear ring. This is what we're looking for. This is gonna cause some running problems. Something's going through the jet pump, and we'll probably call this customer and ask him if he wants to put a new wear ring in it. We'll also inspect the drive shaft at this time, which is right here. The drive shaft stays in with the, on the four strokes, and it looks good, still has grease on it. All of our washers, O-rings are in place for cooling and baler fittings. And we can take a look at the intake grate down through there, make sure there's no debris. Oops. Now we'll take this over to the workbench. We'll pull the nose cone off of it, this end, and inspect the pump grease inside. This is our pump. This will hold our pump. This is actually the impeller removal tool. We'll take the jet pump complete assembly, drop it over top of the tool, and spline it. That gives us a nice stationary work workplace. The nose cone bolts are five millimeter metric. We'll take them out one at a time. Again, watch there are washers on there. You don't want to lose any small parts. We'll take our air hose and blow some of this fluid away so we don't contaminate our pump grease. Now we'll pop the nose cone off. It's a pretty good suction fit, so we'll get a little pry there with a pick. And get a screwdriver. Slide it right in there nice and gentle. And just sort of work this around. And pry up a little bit as we go. And that our nose cone comes right off in our hand. As you can see, the pump grease is in perfect condition. O-rings are intact. We want to check, take a good look at the O-rings inside the pump here. Also, your grease inside the pump. This pump looks good. So at this point, we can put the nose cone back on, and we can reinstall our screws. Again, lock tight your screws, and we'll snug them down, and then check the appropriate man manual for the proper torque spec. We've consulted the proper manual, found our torque spec. On this model, it's 66 inch pounds. Okay, now we'll move the pump from the fixture. We'll grease our splines. I'll take my air nozzle, <coughs> blow out 
This is the water inlet side of the pump going to cool the exhaust system. Want to make sure there's no debris in there. Clean that out real good. Just dry this up a little bit. And we're ready to reinstall our pump. You want to take a good close look at your rubber O-ring around the inlet side of the pump. Make sure it's not bent or kinked or anything like that because that could cause a running problem, a cavitation problem. On the back side, we're going to apply some 518 just to give us a good seal around between the pump and the steering nozzle. Now the pump's ready to go back in. Move carefully. You have to reach over the top of the pump and guide the drive shaft into the impeller. Then line up on the studs. And then we'll give the impeller just a slight twist and get her to spline in. And there she goes. I'm gonna make sure she's in all the way. All your washers and your nuts. These do have nylon inserts on them, so we don't have to use any type of thread locker on them. And we'll run them back in with the ratchet. And we're going to do this in a crisscross pattern. Now we can reinstall our steering nozzle. The steering nozzle bolts are not nylocks. The threads are not, don't have any type of aluminum or plastic coating, so we will put some Loctite on those. And if you have the reverse gate down, be careful. It will bite you like a bear trap. So you want to be careful and line her up. Then again, do the crisscross pattern. And last one. Okay, steering nozzle's installed. We can reconnect our cables and opass. First we'll do the steering. Make sure the bolt's clean. Next will be the opass for this side. Now all these nuts have nylon in them, so they again they don't need lock tight. Good and snug. Move it over to our other opass. And now reverse. Okay, and finally, we'll hook up our hose for the opass which is right here, it's going to go to our white elbow coming off the jet pump. And it simply slides back over, position our hose clamp, make sure we're pulled down inside so the water flows properly, and snug her up. White grease, we'll apply it to our steering cable on this side liberally. And once again, we'll take our anti-corrosive lubricant and spray everything. All your moving parts, nuts, bolts, housing, or your a little bit inside, on either side of the pivots. Also, this time we'll lubricate our ladder. 
and also our opas veins speedometer and this unit's ready to go to bed for the winter